This is the follow-up activity and memorandum discussion of Unit AG1, Module 2, where we revise analytical geometry. We will now have a look at what is expected of you in this activity. Question 1, we are given a diagram with three coordinates that are vertices of the triangle. G is the midpoint of AB and AE is perpendicular to BC. First, we have to determine the coordinates of G, the midpoint of AB, so we will use the midpoint formula. Question B, determine the length of CG, so we will use our distance formula with the new coordinate. Question C, determine theta, the inclination of BC, to one decimal digit, so we will say that tan theta is equal to the gradient of CB. Question D, determine the equation of the straight line FA, which is parallel to line BC. So we will use this gradient for the parallel line. Question E, determine the equation of line AE, the altitude of CB. And question F, determine the y-intercept of line AE. For question 2, we are given four coordinates and they are four points in a Cartesian plane. Use analytical methods to prove each of the following, that AB is perpendicular to AD. Question B, that AB is parallel to CD, so they must have the same gradients. And question C, AB equal to CD, so we will use our distance formula. Then question 3, we are also given three coordinates, which are vertices of the quadrilateral PQ, RT, and we are also given M, the coordinate of the midpoint of QT. So for question A, we have to determine the gradient of RT. We must also determine the equation of RT in the form Y equal to MX plus C. Then we have to prove that PR is perpendicular to MT then determine the coordinates of Q, then question E, what type of quadrilateral is PQRT, and we have to motivate the answer, and then question F, calculate the area of the quadrilateral. You may now stop the video, first complete the activity before you listen to the memorandum discussion. We will now look at the solutions of Unit AG1, Module 2. In Question 1a, we use the midpoint formula to calculate the midpoint G, where the x values are added together and divided by 2, as well as the y values added together and divided by 2. So the x values, we take minus 2 plus 4, which is 2, and divided by 2, which is 1. And then the y values, we take minus 3 plus the minus 5, which is minus 8, divided by the 2 to get minus 4. In question 1b, we use our distance formula, where underneath the square root, we first find the difference in x values and then square it. 2 minus the 1, 1 squared is then 1. Then we add the difference in y values, 1 minus the minus 4, which becomes a plus 4. 1 plus 4 is 5, and we square it to get 25. Then the 25 plus 1 gives me the 26 underneath the square root. For question C, we first need the gradient of BC, so we will take the difference in y values divided by the difference in x values. So we will have minus 5 minus 1 above the fraction line, 
and then divide it by 4 minus 2 below the fraction line. When we simplify, minus 5 minus 1 is minus 6, and 4 minus 2 is 2, so minus 6 divided by 2 gives me the gradient of minus 3. Then we can say that tan theta is equal to the gradient of BC, so we set it equal to minus 3, and work out the reference angle. We press shift tan with the 3 inside the bracket to get 71,6 degrees as the reference angle. Remember, we do not enter the negative when working out the reference angle, but we do know that tan theta is negative in the second quadrant to give an obtuse angle, and therefore the reference angle of 71,6 is subtracted from 180 to get theta equal to 108,4 degrees. Then in question 1D, we know for parallel lines, the two lines will have the same gradient. And since we know that the gradient of BC is minus 3, the gradient of FA must then also be minus 3. Then we use the standard form of the straight line, y equal to mx plus c, and we substitute m with the worked out gradient of minus 3. Then we use the coordinate on the line FA, minus 2 and minus 3, to substitute the x then with minus 2 and the y with minus 3 in order to solve c. When we then simplify, minus 3 times minus 2 is a positive 6, and the 6 taken to the other side becomes a negative 6, and minus 3 minus 6 gives me the c value of minus 9. And therefore the equation of fa is y equal to the minus 3x minus 9. Then for perpendicular lines, we know that the product of the gradients must equal minus 1. We've already worked out the gradient of BC being minus 3, and therefore we can say that the gradient of AE times the minus 3 must equal minus 1. So to get the gradient of AE, we have to divide both sides by the minus 3, and minus 1 divided by the minus 3 is then a positive 1 over 3. Then once again, we use the standard form of the straight line, y equal to mx plus c, and now substitute m with the gradient, a third. Then we use the coordinate on line ae to substitute x with minus 2 and y with minus 3 in order to solve c. When we then simplify, c is equal to minus 2 and a third. In other words, the equation of AE is y equal to a third x minus 2 and a third. Question F. To determine the y-intercept of line AE, we need to set x equal to 0 to find the y-value on that line. So when we substitute x with 0, a third times 0 is 0, and we are left once again with the minus 2 and a third, which is my y-intercept on the straight line of AE. For question 2, to prove perpendicular lines, we have to show that the gradients multiplied with one another gives us minus 1. So we will work out the gradient of AB separately from the gradient of AD. Working with the gradient of AB, we will take the difference in y values to minus 3 over the difference in x values, minus 2, minus 3. And when we simplify, the gradient is 1 over 5. Then the gradient of AD, once again, we take the difference in y values to minus minus 3, which is a 2 plus 3, and then the difference in x values, minus 2, minus minus 1, which becomes a plus 1. When we then simplify, the gradient of AD is minus 5. 
Now, when we take the product of the two gradients, it should give us minus 1 for perpendicular lines. So 1 over 5 times the minus 5 is indeed equal to minus 1. So we can conclude that AB is perpendicular to AD. Then for question 2B, to prove parallel lines, we must show that the two gradients are equal. So we already have the gradient of AB, which is 1 over 5, and we must now work out the gradient of CD, which then should also be equal to 1 over 5 if the two lines are parallel. So working out the gradient of CD, we take the difference in Y values, minus 2, minus, minus 3, which becomes a plus 3, over the difference in X values, 4, minus, minus 1, which will become a plus 1. If we then simplify the gradient of CD is indeed also 1 over 5, and therefore we can conclude that line AB is parallel to CD since the two gradients are exactly the same. Then for question 2C, we have to prove that the two lines are equal to one another and therefore we are working with the distance formula. Then working out the distance of AB, we take the difference in X values and square it and then add the difference in Y values and also square it. So the difference in X values, minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 squared becomes 25 and the difference in Y values, 2 minus 3 is minus 1 squared becomes a plus 1 and 25 plus 1 gives me the 26 under the square root. Then the distance of CD, we use the formula with the square root and then find the difference in X values and square it plus the difference in Y values and also square it. So the difference in X values is 4 minus minus 1 which becomes a plus 1. 4 plus 1 is 5 and 5 squared is 25. Then we add the difference in Y values minus 2 Minus minus 3 becomes a plus 3. Minus 2 plus 3 is 1 and 1 squared is 1. Then 25 plus 1 gives me the 26 underneath the square root. We can conclude that the distances or the lengths of the two lines are equal and therefore AB is indeed equal to CD. In question 3A we have to determine the gradient of R. T. So we find the difference in Y values over the difference in X values. Therefore, the difference in Y values, minus 8 minus 1, is minus 9. Over the difference in X values, minus 2 minus 5, is minus 7. And then a minus divided by a minus becomes a positive. So the gradient of RT is 9 over 7. Then we can also work out the equation of the line by using the standard form of a straight line, y equal to mx plus c, where m, the gradient, is now substituted with the 9 over 7. Then we can use either the coordinate r or t, because both these coordinates are on the straight line, if I use the coordinate t where x is 5 and y is 1, x is substituted with 5 and y is substituted with 1 to solve c. If I then simplify, c is equal to minus 5 and 3 over 7 and therefore the equation is y equal to 9 over 7 x minus the 5 and 3 over 7. Question 3C, to prove perpendicular lines, we have to show that the product of gradients are equal to minus 1. So we work out the gradient of PR separately from the gradient of MT. For the gradient PR, we take the difference in Y values, 
4 minus minus 8, which becomes a plus 8, over the difference in x values, 4 minus minus 2, which becomes a plus 2. When we then simplify, the gradient of PR is equal to 2. The same with the gradient of MT, we take the difference in y values, 2 minus 1, over the difference in x values, 3 minus 5. If we then simplify, the gradient of MT is equal to minus a half. To prove perpendicular lines, we have to take the product of the two gradients and check whether they are equal to minus 1. So 2 times the minus a half is indeed equal to minus 1, and therefore we can conclude that PR is perpendicular to MT. For question 3D, we are given the fact that M is the midpoint of QT. So when we add the X values and divide it by 2, it must give me the midpoint 3. And when we add the Y values and divide it by 2, it must give me the Y value of 2. So basically, we set up an equation by adding the x values together, x plus 5, and divided by 2, to give the x coordinate of the midpoint 3. Then we solve, getting rid of the division by 2, we have to times by 2 on both sides, and 3 times 2 gives me the 6. The plus 5 taken to the other side is minus 5, and 6 minus 5 gives me the x coordinate of q being 1. The same is done for the y coordinate of q, where we set up an equation by adding the y values, y plus 1, and dividing it by 2 to equal the y coordinate of the midpoint 2. To get rid of the division by 2, we times by 2 on both sides, and 2 times 2 is 4. We then take the 1 to the other side and subtract it from 4 to get the y coordinate of q being 3. For question 3e, we can conclude that we have a kite because the diagonals intersect each other at right angles and the shorter diagonal is bisected by the longer diagonal. Then for question 3f, the distance of pr, we take the difference in x values, 4 minus minus 2 to become a plus 2, and square it. 4 plus 2 is 6, and 6 squared is 36. Then we take the difference in y values, 4 minus minus 8 to become a plus 8, and 4 plus 8 is 12, 12 squared being 144. If we then simplify, PR is equal to 6 times square root 5. Then the distance of MT, the difference in x values, 3 minus 5 being squared, plus the difference in y values, 2 minus 1, also squared, and when we simplify, mt is equal to square root 5. Now the area of the kite is twice the area of triangle PRT. The area of triangle PRT can be written as half the base times the height, where the base is the distance of PR, and the height is the distance of mt. Then 2 times the half cancel one another out to become 1. So basically, I will then just multiply the two lengths with one another to get the total area of 30 square units. And that brings us to the end of this activity and memorandum discussion, and you may now continue with your next lesson.